Well, here we are, the beginning of video number five. Uh, now, during this video, I'm going to get this thing on its wheels and uh, try to get as far along and as close to having a driving chassis as I can. Um, if you remember in the last video, I had uh, purchased a few components, but I was waiting on everything else. So the rest of it is here now. So I'm going to go through that stuff first, and then we'll get the building on this thing and see if we can get a rolling chassis here. Here are the steel braces welded on, one in the rear and some tabs. This one here where you step in and stand, eighth inch steel. And then this one across the front here. All right, so I just have to drill through these and bolt it in. The uh, bolts are installed now, nuts and washers and bolts are in there, so I'm happy with that. Okay. It actually took 14 uh, bolts, I used 9 sixteenths, or I'm um, uh, 5 sixteenths by 1 inch, 14 of those little suckers. All right, so that's not going anywhere. All right. Okay, I broke the chassis down into six sections. Raw materials, wheels and hubs, the drivetrain items, suspension, steering, and foot controls. So I'm going to show you the items in each of these sections. Uh, I'm going to move through it pretty quick, so uh, if you want to look at it longer, just stop the video. Okay, so let's look at raw materials. Okay, here's uh, the uh, items that you're going to need to build a chassis, the raw materials. So uh, it starts out with the frame and chassis. So, uh, and that's a 1 by 3 rectangle tube, 1 inch by 3 inches. They call this thin wall or .062 wall. So that's what you make the chassis out of. Then you've got the front axle. This is one and five eighths diameter. Uh, this is um, 120 wall, thick wall they call it. Uh, uh, one eighth of an inch is 0.125, so this is almost one eighth thick wall. Uh, this, this is one and five eighths. You could use one and a half. Uh, you could use medium wall, which is 0.095, but you want a nice stout tube for the front axle. Uh, then uh, this is quarter inch plate steel right here, quarter inch thick. I use that to make the uh, engine mounting plate. Uh, I have a mill so I can draw, uh, make the elongated slots. Uh, but usually when you buy these, they're made of eighth inch steel. They're off the shelf. I just like them a little more stout. Uh, then you've got three sixteenth inch steel and uh, eighth inch thick steel. Uh, these two can make a number of brackets. It can make the spring shackles for the three sixteenth, brake rod brackets for the eighth. Uh, you can also use inch and a half by inch and a half angle. Uh, but with these two steels, you can make, actually these three, you can make any number of brackets. Um, then for the steering shaft, that's a one and five, or that's a five eighths inch diameter steel, steel rod. And then for the brake rod uh, off the foot pedal back to the brake, you can use a quarter inch solid rod. Uh, then you also need, uh, for the wood tub, some half inch uh, maple plywood. This is a cabinet grade plywood. Uh, what you buy down at Home Depot is for construction, it's like fur grade. I guess it'll work, but uh, this is just a little bit nicer material. That's what I used to make the tub. Half inch thick, four by eight sheet. All right, so with those basic items, you can build the chassis. And uh, there, there might be a couple things I'm forgetting here, but this is generally the extent of it. All right, so uh, now we're going to get into uh, the wheels and the hubs. That'll be next. All right, let's go over the items for the wheels and hubs. And you'll notice on this list, I give you uh, the source and the part number. So you should be able to find these things online. But it starts with a couple of front rims. These are off the CT90, Honda Trail 90. Then uh, 
couple of rear rims. They're a little bit different, but they have, this is where your bolts go through the hub. So those are kind of nice. A couple of those. Okay, then we have four tires. These are uh, Michelin Gazelles, uh, 275 by 17. There's the model number from JP Cycles, uh, 210-075. Those are nice tires. They hold up pretty good. Uh, then we've got uh, inner tubes. There's four inner tubes. Bike Master. Here's the model number from JP Cycles, 217-002. Then we have uh, rim strips. And these go around the rims to, to protect the spokes from cutting the uh, inner tube. So you need four of those. And, uh, then we have uh, front axle bearings. So these are from Real World Cycle out of Tucson. And the beauty of these is they're 37 millimeter outside, three quarter inside. I got a spindle here. So those fit on there pretty good. You have two on, one on the inside, one on the outside, so four, four bearings total. And then you have the rear hubs. Okay, so so you don't actually use these studs, but you drill through and mount to the rear rear wheel one inch this is for the one inch axle there's the keyway which is uh for the these hardened hardened steel keys here which you're going to need to buy at a local hardware store so they fit in the in here they fit in the locking collars and the sprocket hub all right so those are the items you need uh for the front uh for the wheels and hubs front and rear okay Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, drivetrain items. Alright, so it starts with the Honda GX200. I like using the Honda versus the clone. It's more money, but, uh, you know, I haven't had any problems with the other two at all. Always starts. Great running engine. It's got a three-quarter inch shaft. It's two and seven sixteenths long. And uh, right there is the model number if you want to shop around. They're not the cheapest from Northern Tool, but with that model number you could do some shopping. Okay, so there's that. Then the uh, torque converter. Uh, when you buy the torque converter, it comes with this cover they use it on the mini bikes. It's TAV2, uh, TAV2-30. So uh, here's the components plate, some hardware, there's an important little spacer that goes on the shaft, and here's the clutch mechanism, take this, scenario here, and then the belt, and uh, the box that it comes in. It's interesting here that it uh, has a model number, part number, 21852A. And then right here is a uh, website, Hofco, H O F F C O slash Comet dot com. I've never been on that site. I'm going to have to check it out. Okay, so that's the torque converter. This uh, uses the number 35 chain, 12 tooth spot. That's what I like to use, and that's that's right there. Okay, sprocket. So I like to use the 62 sprocket because uh, you know with the engine turning 3,500 RPM maximum, this the cart will do over 45 miles an hour. Uh, anyway, the 62 is a much smaller sprocket too. Uh, if you want to have a compact compartment, and then you also need the sprocket holder. Uh, which goes in between here, lines up with these bolt holes, and then this fits the one inch axle and then has the keyway for the hardened steel key. 
So when you buy a sprocket, you need a sprocket holder. <clears throat> then uh, the rear axle. Right here. It's got a keyway on, on both ends. A little two inch step here for the thread. One inch diameter, 36 inches long. So that works out good. Alright. So then we have uh, the brake caliper. So here's the brake caliper, mechanical. Mounts in that fashion and the rod comes in, hooks to it. And along with that is, is the disc that goes with it. One inch axle, quarter inch keyway. So these two go hand in hand. And then uh, you need the axle bearings right here. So this is a one inch diameter and these are cool because they articulate to any angle that the frame rail is. So I like using these. And you'll notice it says uh, two hole. There's two holes here. There's a three hole version but it won't fit on a one by three frame rail. So these are the ones I use. And then uh, on, the, on either side of the, the disc, the sprocket, and the axle bearings, you want to have these uh, locking collars, split style um, from manufacturer supply. So these are important because, uh, you know, they keep everything from moving around. When you have it right where you want it, you put these on, put some Loctite in here, and everything stays put. All right, so those are the items for the drivetrain. Okay, here's the balance of the items for the uh, chassis. So, suspension. Uh, so, it, for the BMW, I need uh, one leaf spring. So, um, these come from uh, Angle's Coat Shop. It's actually a, a spring for a wagon seat. So, he makes them up by hand. They're one and a half by 22 and a half. There's the uh, website right there, so you can contact them to get a spring. Uh, rear suspension. You're looking at it. Foam seat, that's your rear suspension. I buy this, it's one inch thick, it's 24 wide, six feet long. I cut it up, I glue it together. That creates as thick of a pad as I want for the front and the rear. Uh, let's see, steering wheel. Uh, I'm doing a custom steering wheel on the BMW, uh, but uh, uh, Northern Tool sells uh, a 12 inch diameter wheel right there, number 13825. I've used that on, uh, I use that on the Monocar. So, uh, and then uh, the steering shaft. Um, Okay. So I actually have a length of rod, but I went ahead and bought this setup. Uh, this is 34 inches long. It comes with uh, this little piece here that slips onto the spline and accepts the 12 inch uh, steering wheel. So that's nice, the bolt's already on. It comes with some locking collars. Uh, and then these are the, the pitman arms, your uh, heim joints. They go in here like this. Same hind joints on the tie rod that you'd use for the pitman arm on the inside. And these uh, get welded on uh, once you decide where you want it. You weld them on. And when they're installed in the cart, they point down. So that when you turn right, the car turns right. When you turn left, it turns right, uh, left. So, and this is long enough. I'll have to cut it off just a little bit. So there's the steering shaft tie rods. So I measured uh, the beamer and uh, these are 15 inches long and a little bit longer when you add these ends. Uh, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, the kit comes with the heim joints and these little lock, lock nuts. These are 5 16 uh, diameter uh, rods. Okay. So then the spindles. So when you buy the spindles, you have to buy a right hand and a left hand. So uh, that shows up right there. One right hand, one left hand, and uh, they're three-quarter inch axle, four inches long. I end up cutting them off. So you need a couple of those, one right, one left. 
Uh, then you need the uh, two paddles. Same deal on the paddles. One right hand, one left hand. So that's pretty straightforward. And uh, the, there's the number, right hand versus left hand. And then the uh, last item you need is uh, a throttle cable. Well, I don't have a throttle cable with me right now. But Northern Tool sells it. There's the number. It's long enough to reach uh, from the pedal. It comes with a little rod. And these little springs, they're almost, they're basically worthless. Uh, but the cable is good and the rod is usable. So that's, uh, that's the rest of the items required to uh, get the chassis up and running. Okay. I thought I'd take a minute and show you a couple things I've learned about these rear rims, or for that matter, rears or fronts, whatever you get from a salvage yard or off of eBay that are old 45-year-old rims. Uh, this rim here is all cleaned up, but this one isn't. So this is pretty typical of how they might come from a wrecking yard. Uh, this particular rim didn't have a tire and tube, but I've bought others that did. And uh, it, it could take you a couple hours to get the old tube, tube and tire off because they get frozen to the rim and they're hard as a rock. So you end up almost, I had to cut a couple of them off. Sometimes they come off. Uh, but uh, if they have this uh, hub in them, uh, sometimes that can get frozen in there. And this one was a little stiff. I had to put some WD-40 in there and pry on it. And you want to be careful because you can break the casting of this, of this rim. But once I got this apart, you can see how typically this might look on the inside. Look at this thing. What a mess. That's uh, pretty typical. All corroded and shot to hell inside so uh this part just goes away let me show this other side real quick this is this would be the sprocket side of the rear wheel and these little, little rubber pieces they come out uh, if i can get it out of there just they just come out okay so going back to this other side here so what i usually do is i um i knock the bearings out clean all the grease out and then I give them I wash them I give them a bath and then when they're dry I put them in the bee blaster and they end up looking pretty much like this they clean up real nice in a bee blaster glass bead or any kind of medium really um, it doesn't harm the chrome uh, and it, it actually does a real nice job of getting all the rust off um, but before I can do that, you know, like I said, I got to get these bearings out of there and you don't want any grease when you're, when you're in a bead blaster. So I have this selection of different size punches here that uh, I'll end up using every one of them to get this, to, to knock these bearings out. The, the tough part is, is getting, getting one side out because once you get one side out, then you have access to knock the other bearing out pretty easy. So the problem is that when you stick the punch down in there, you're trying to catch the edge of the bearing down below. And uh, I've learned that inside there, there's this little spacer. And um, it's uh, if you can work this thing back and forth, you can get that spacer to basically shift back and forth inside the bore. And what that does is it exposes the edge of the bearing down there so you can catch it with the punch and you tap on it a little bit then you you know you move the spacer over so you can get the other edge of the bearing and you just keep tap tap tapping until you work it out of there uh, you gotta hammer on it pretty good actually uh, sometimes they come out easy sometimes not a little WD-40 doesn't hurt um, but I've learned that about the spacer and uh, so you, that's the first thing I try to do is get that spacer to move inside of there. I've been installing the bearings in these front rims, so I wanted to show you that. So I, uh, I like these bearings. Uh, they're from Real World Cycle. And, uh, you know, the bore in this hub is 37 millimeters, and that's what this bearing is outside, so they tap right in. Uh, but uh, and, yeah, let me show you this other side here real quick. So you tap them in. And this, uh, there's a shoulder in here, so it seats down when you get it all the way in. But, on this other side, let me show you on this rim, 
the shoulder down here is way deeper uh, than the thickness of the bearing, which is only about three eighths thick. So I had to, uh, I have this piece of pipe that I had to make some little spacers. So you can't see it, but inside here there's there's spacers. So that this is so that this is ends up being more or less flush. So that worked out pretty good. That way I can tighten it up and that bearing won't continue to work its way down into the bore. Um, so these rims are, are ready to put uh, t uh, tires and tubes and the rim strips on. They're basically already cleaned up. Uh, the, these are old rims I found at a salvage yard and the chrome's all rough, you know, but I think ultimately I'm going to have these powder coated um, and that'll take care of that. Now, uh, I want to show you something on this one rim here, if you can see it. Let's see if I can get this in the light just right. So this, this rim has the appearance of being pretty good rim, uh, but under closer inspection, right here, the side wall of this rim is all smashed in. And I just don't know of any way a guy could repair that. So you want to avoid rims that are, that are dented like that. You know, they can be uh, a little bit out of round or out of true, you know, but you can, you know, because the spokes are loose or whatever, you can tighten those up and true it up. But when this, when this kind of happens, uh, I'd avoid that kind of rim. Now, I bought this rim because at the same time I was digging around, I found this, this other rim. It, it's almost like a brand new rim. It's got rust on it. I don't know that it's ever been, uh, you know, put together. Uh, but I got it for a smoking deal. And I can take the guts out of this and transfer it into this rim and have me a nice true rim so uh, that's why I ended up buying this one otherwise I would have avoided buying that it, you know so uh, but let me show you this uh, in here I got the card inside because it's kind of cold outside in the workshop so let's see here let me put this on here okay so so that looks pretty good so these spindles, they, they tend to be a little on the long side. Uh, you know, you could uh, put a spacer in here, you know, up, say an inch long, and then that would bring this right in line, which is uh, what I've done on my other carts. It works all right. But, you know, the spear steering is better when these are up tight against this shoulder here, if possible. Okay, I'm going to put the uh, tires and tubes on these front uh, rims now couple little things I've learned uh, you, you really need to use brand new rim strips here they're a couple bucks a piece uh, you know they cover this the, the uh, uh, spokes so they don't poke a hole in the tube so if you don't use these you're asking for trouble you'll just have flats all the time uh, and then the tubes you know they they come in uh, in a box and they're all folded up and they're kind of hard to get inside the tire so I air them up one time and then I use this valve stem tool here take out the valve stem, then I can completely get all the air out and I can get them inside the tires. And then uh, the uh, Michelin Gazelle tires have a, an interesting little feature here. If this was a rear wheel on a motorcycle, that'd be the direction of travel. And then if it was on the front rim, that would be the direction of travel. I guess that's to get the tread going in the right direction. So a couple little pointers. Well, I messed around with these front rims for a couple of hours, and I got the tires and tubes on and uh, installed them on the spindles, and uh, everything's looking pretty good so far. So they spin real nice. And then uh, I've got them fairly snug. I put the spacers that came with it in there just temporary. And then uh, later, I've uh, on the other carts, I've cut this spindle off once I had the wheel where I wanted it. I used a sawzall, it wasn't too tough. I'm using a half inch drill bit here to uh, drill through this hub for the uh, bolts, which are uh, half by three. Um, and so uh, I'm getting her done here. 
So this hole is uh, 1 and 3 sixteenths centered between these two studs and 15 sixteenths in from the edge, which puts uh, the hole where you want it in the hub. So, all right, I'm going to finish drilling these out. Work continues on the rear hubs here, so uh, let's show you what I've got so far. All right, um, so using my mill, I milled down this uh, center section here. Uh, down one and three eighths from this top surface here, and uh, you'll see why I did that. Uh, actually, is to make room for the nut on the end of the axle, um, and then uh, on the other side, I milled it down flush with here with this face. It stuck up about uh, three eighths of an inch or so, and that way I could put a flat plate here if I felt like it. Uh, so, and then of course I I got this uh, other rim cleaned up. Um, so they're both cleaned up now. They've been milled and they're ready to be drilled uh, through here and Then I also rounded up some uh, um, These are grade 8 uh, Half by 3 inch uh, Nuts bolt lock washer so half by 3 and then uh, the hubs uh, so you saw I had a setup. I, I had them all drilled out, so they're ready to accept the half-inch bolts. Uh, but I still have to get them to where they'll drop down inside of the hub here, and so I have this extra hub here where you can see where we grind a flat on here. You see, it's not a doesn't have to be dead accurate, um, but e equal as best you can. And what that does is it allows this to drop down inside. See, there's a little bit of slop there. But you'll end up centering that up when you uh, put in the nuts and bolts. So, I have to grind it. I have to grind these, these two hubs to look like this one. Okay, that's what I'm going to do next. And at that point, I'd be able to uh, actually bolt the hub to the rims. Uh, then I could put the t tires and tubes on, and they'd be ready to install. So that's what I'm going to accomplish today. So the goal on this grinding here is to take off about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of each stud. And, you know, truthfully, I eyeballed these when I was grinding them. Uh, here I put a little piece of tape, used a marker, so it gives me a reference line, at least. Uh, but as you start getting closer uh, to the uh, to it fitting, then you just have the hub nearby and you just check the fit until she drops in. All right. So about three sixteenths of an inch off of each stud, and I also uh, picked myself up a nice new fresh grinding wheel here. Okay, let's get after it. Okay, let's uh, grind on this thing a little bit. I gotta take off a little bit more. Yep, a little bit more. Kind of sneak up on it. All right, well, 
pops in. And so you just kind of have to feel it to see if it's equal. Yeah, I'd say I should take off just a little bit more off of this one right there so it would feel equal. good. I can center it up in the hub. That one's done. Okay. Do the other one and it won't be long for I'll have it all together. Okay, the last order of business here is to drill through the hub portion. Let's see here. I'll be drilling through this portion here, which isn't too thick. Drill's pretty easy, but you have to be careful because uh, of the way these these ribs are laid out. So it's right in between these two marks, right in the center, right there is where I want to drill because uh, if you look this up on this side, there's a rib there. The dotted line represents the rib on the other side. So I think that's about the only thing I can do to screw it up. I want to be in the center of this patch and the center in between the rib and this line here. So if I get the marks right, then it drills pretty easy. Alright, so that goes in there like that. So that's the idea. Okay. And then I just got a cordless drill here and I'll just punch through. Alright. One step closer to getting the tires and tubes on and getting these rims uh, mounted on the axle. I finished the drilling. So I got uh, punched all the half inch holes. Line it up on my reference mark. This one I already have them installed. Don't have them tight, tight yet, but they're in there. See, the three-inch bolt works perfect. By the time you tighten it all down, it's just right. Okay. Almost job done. Sweet. Okay, let's install this rear hub. This is the left rear, and it's going to be the freewheeling hub. So I just put some grease in there. And we'll slide it on here. So there will be no key, no lock, no set screw, because it's just going to spin, so it's going to freewheel. And then uh, the nut. Okay, so this is the drive hub. Um, instead of freewheeling, 
uh, it's it's installed the same way, but with one exception. It has the hardened key in the keyway here. So I just got to finish tapping that in, and then uh, it, you uh, use the set screw to hold the hub, and then you tighten this nut up. Use a little Loctite in there when for the final assembly. Tighten that up, a little Loctite, and then I'll put a split collar right here to keep this key from migrating out because they have a tendency to work their way out. Okay, so that's the drive side. That one's solid to the axle. Everything spins. The axle, the other side, free wheels. Okay, so I'm going to finish putting this one on. All right, I'm a happy guy. I've got the chassis sitting on its wheels. So uh, it took uh, five videos to get to the point where I had a roller. Still have quite a bit to do to get it to be a running tr uh, chassis. But I'm happy with the way it looks so far. So uh, I want to show you how the suspension works too. So it's got pretty good, pretty good travel. Get the radius rods in there. And that'll be nice. Because this moves. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I took a minute and put the cart in front of the uh, full-size drawing that's uh, hanging on the wall there. Uh, that drawing is sitting up on the base molding, so it's four inches higher up. Uh, but it lines up pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with the way it's coming out. I'm going to sit in it here for a second and see how it feels. Got my little steering wheel right about there. Yeah. Feels good. Pedals. Alright. I love it when a plan comes together. So I'll show you something here. So you can see the drawing behind on the wall there. How the wheels uh, are lining up. Move it up just a little bit. There we go. It'll just stay there. So it's a 60 inch wheelbase. And it uh, lines up nicely with the drawing. You can see how the tail will come out past the edge of the frame and finish off the look. I think that'll be nice when it's done. And then uh, I changed the seat back, the angle, a little bit because uh, when I got to measuring, uh, one critical measurement is uh, from uh, the face of the dash, right here, there, to the back of the seat. I, I want 27 inches, but that was clear back to here. So I changed the angle a little bit to get a little more clearance to get in and out. And uh, here you can see where the cowl support lines up with the cowl support there. And then uh, one other thing of note is that this isn't the actual front of the car, that's a substructure. So the uh, finished car is, you know, four or five inches further out, covers all this, it'll be out to about here. So that'll, when you add the radiator and then the tail section, then it, it all comes into uh, scale. It starts looking like the real thing. Alright. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. So let's see what the track is. So let's see, that's 39 center to center. If I take out the spacers and move them in, I'll have the 38 that I'm after. And then back here. 36. So that's what I was after. I wanted a track of uh, 36 in the back and 38 in the front. So yeah, I'm liking the looks of that. Alright. Well, this just might uh, be the end of uh, video number five. Um, I managed to accomplish the goal of getting it on its wheels. I, I'd hoped to get it running, but uh, by the end of video six, I think I could have a running driving chassis. I need to focus on the radius rods on the front axle and get the motor installed 
steering, that shouldn't be too tough, but there's three major things I gotta do, so.